Oh, hi guys, I'm just going to take you through a brief instructional video on how to use a fishbone diagram. Now this particular tool is part of a group of tools uh, under cause and effect. Uh, the fishbone diagram is also called an Ishikara diagram after the Japanese uh, inventor. Um, we're going to use this particular tool, uh, we're going to introduce this in our Cert 4 in our just-in-time unit because it's a problem-solving uh, root cause analysis type tool. So let's get um, let's get into it. As you can see, uh, it's the standard format. Looks like a, a fish bone at the head of the fish. Um, you have the uh, effect or the problem or the things that you're trying to tackle, and then there's four streams: uh, materials, man, machine, and method. Now these are the most four common uh, causes or groups of causes. So uh, what is it? It's a diagram to help us uh, list a large number of potential causes to a problem and as I said before the causes are grouped into main, uh, these four main causes. Now in, you may see other fishbone diagrams that might have six uh, categories and the other two that sometimes used are measurement and environment, but the most popular ones are material, mean, machine, and method. Um, and I'll explain in a little bit more detail what those are. So what's it used for? It's a problem solving tool. It allows us to, to, get, um, to get the bigger picture out of the problem. Now if we have a large cross-functional group of people doing the brainstorming, then it helps uh, kind of facilitate everybody's knowledge. Um, to identify causes and ultimately or uh, hopefully to identify possible solutions. Um, how do we how do we use it? And I'll explain a little bit more detail the steps involved. Um, it's pretty straightforward, um, but it is a brainstorming tool where we get some uh, few key causes that are most likely that uh, are contributing to the problem, and then we also come up with solutions. And it's commonly used, obviously, in a uh, problem-solving uh, environment. So, just got an example here. And this particular cause and effect diagram, the way that we set it up, you'll get a template, and the template will have materials, mean, machine, and method, and a box at the top, a uh, box at the front of the uh, fish uh, for the problem. Now, the materials uh, category are any of those things that are material-related. Um, could be supplier, could be the quality of the material, uh, could be the, the uh, anything to do with the material. And then man is typically about the skill or the competency of the person uh, involved in the activity or involved in the problem. Uh, method is um, procedures, SOPs, uh, ways of doing things, any, any process related um, uh, cause. And then obviously machine is anything to do with um, equipment, tools, anything like that. So this particular case, there's a problem uh, of a rework, which is way over budget for the month. So this particular um, fishbone diagram is used um, as a brainstorming tool. So the person who's most involved to try and tackle the problem gets a group of people together, and that group of people uh, is best if it's cross-functional. So cross-functional meaning that it's not everybody from the area where the problem exists, but you're inviting people outside that area because they may have um, knowledge or understanding which will help you in your problem solving. So you, you get a group of people together, a brainstorming session. Brainstorming session only needs to take uh, you know 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes uh, tops. And what you do is you brainstorm the possible causes of the problem. So you ask the question, um, you know, the rework, which is way over budget for the month, what are the possible causes or the possible contributors to causing that problem? Um, and uh, there's two golden rules for brainstorming. The first golden rule is that there's no uh, bad ideas. And the second golden rule is that there's no bad ideas. So what you do is you facilitate a process where you're asking your team, you know, what are the possible causes? and then you're listing them down, either writing them on this particular template or using post-it notes, and you write on the post-it note and you post a post-it note on, on the board. Don't get too hung up on, on the categories or where a particular 
um, possible cause lives. Um, but the main four categories are, which are used about 90% of the time, um, they they are helping us to understand um, and to and to brainstorm. So in this particular case, there was a particular problem. Brainstorming activity using the fishbone diagram was undertaken, and we've come up with eight possible causes. Um, eight's probably pretty good. Um, you could have a whole lot more, depending on the size of the team, depending on um, how long you give it. But let's say there's been, in this case, there's been eight particular potential contributors or causes to the rework being way over budget. Then we can't tackle the eight at once. So then we do determine what are the most likely. So we kind of vote or we agree that um, let's pick a couple. So in this particular case, this group has picked uh, quality as the most likely contributor. So the quality of the material and they've come up with another one as bad planning um, as a possible contributor. So we've got two possible causes to the problem and then we need to do something about it. So now that we've identified these couple of uh, potential causes, the next thing to do is create uh, an action plan. So um, action plan in typical fashion needs to have three major components. It has to have uh, obviously the detail, the description of the action, it needs to have uh, one owner, uh, the person responsible for the uh, action and a due date the action is going to be completed by. Uh, this particular team has come up um, before they've finished the brainstorming session, they've come up with uh, three actions. They've come up with two under the, um, the contributor of quality and one under the contributor of uh, bad planning. So the two actions undertake a measure of the aluminum quality for the next two weeks and RT is going to do that by the, the 15th. And then the next one is discuss with supplier what is causing the variation in quality. WE is going to do that by the 18th. And they've also agreed collectively uh, as a group, they've agreed on an action for uh, the bad planning contributor to check out the planning process over the next week to identify what's the issues. And that to me seems to like they're gathering more data. And SP is going to do that by the 21st. Now, you, in typical fashion, what you'll find is that um, if you implement these actions and, um, and, and they are related to the root cause, then the problem will disappear. Um, if it's not necessarily closely related to the root cause, um, the, ac the actions will make an improvement, but the issue will disappear for a while, but the issue will come back. And then um, also if the root cause is not related to those two, the actions will put in place uh, but, but the problem won't disappear. So this particular case, uh, if the actions um, work, uh, that's great, let's monitor it. If the actions don't work, then we need to consider if it's the actions or if it's the contributor. In this particular team, um, the actions were implemented by the due dates, but the actions didn't do anything and the problem still occurred the next month. So then they came back as a group and had a look at the next likely contributor to the first two and they've come up with the third most likely is a lack of communication. So once again, they would uh, work out what's the uh, activity or the action required to, uh, as part of the lack of communication to implement um, to resolve the problem. So typically this is the way the fishbone works. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send out a template um, of the fishbone so you can use this in your just-in-time unit. Uh, this is where you put into the head of the fishbone um, the identified issue that you've uh, come up with and then we want to see some kind of brainstorming as your group um, and cross-functional group would be even, even better to come up with what are the potential causes to the problem and then once we um, uh, come up with those causes then uh, possible actions. So that's uh, in a nutshell how to use the fishbone diagram. Naturally if you've got any questions uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to, to ask.